Welcome to, to What's Cooking. I'm Deb. And I'm Norma. And today we're making some delicious brunch ideas. Absolutely. It's going to be yummy. So we're going to start off with an ice cube tray. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> Puff pastry appetizers and dessert. Yes. Followed by... Then I'm um, doing breadsticks wrapped with bacon. Oh. They're so good. It's, it's super easy. We, we like lots of easy things. Yes. And then I'm going to make these scrumptious pecan muffins. They're delicious. They are. And, and then, then I'll follow it up with, yes, a breakfast pizza. Yummy. Ooh, and it's pretty darn good. I've tried it. So, uh, and then what are we going to have? Then we're going to have a salad, a nectarines, honey, with honey goat cheese salad and pistachios mm. and some yummy other stuff in there. And then we have to have something to drink. Absolutely. Yes. A brunch is not a brunch without a exactly. cocktail. And since it's watermelon time, we're still in the summertime and we have delicious watermelon, we're making a watermelon pina colada. Ooh. Ooh. I wish we could start off with that, but yeah. we need to get through the <laughs> cooking show. So we're going to end it with that. Yes, yes, yes. So... Thank you for joining us today, and let's get started. And, and we're back. We're back. So now we're going to do a puff pastry party tray. It's going to consist of sweet and savory. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a lot of fun because it's kind of retro. We're using, boys and girls, these are called ice cube trays. <laughs> so... <laughs> You remember back in the day? Remember, I had to go to the 99 cent store to find these things. So we're they used to be metal and there was a Yeah, a, a, oh a, yeah, and you pulled thing, you the lever. Like, you moved the lever and they that, popped out. Not as easy anymore. No, not anymore. Well, you don't need them anymore. Yeah. But now you're going to, and you're going to love using them for all sorts of different things. But for today, we're going to do the appetizers and the desserts. So we've got an ice cube tray. It's already been sprayed with uh, canola oil. So just spray it over the sink. So yeah. You're not getting it all over your stuff. And then uh, we are, uh, you see, these are the things we're going to use. Chips, chocolate chips. These are graham crackers, marshmallows, because guess what? We're making s'mores. Yummy. Oh, we have uh, raspberry jam that will go with the chocolate chips. We have banana that's going to go with the chocolate chips. And we have raspberry that's going to go with some goat cheese. We have egg wash. We have flour. And Deb, what do you have over there? So um, I already, we grilled um, the mushrooms and I did portobello. You can use regular mushrooms or any kind you want. And then I grilled the onions. And then this is alouette cheese for mm -hmm. one of the savory things. And then this is um, the... Um, uh, is that sun-dried? Sun-dried, thank you. <laughs> First word sounds like sun-dried tomatoes. And then we have the cheese I... Cut up a sausage, you know, some of those sausages that you get and they have like cheese and bacon and other things in there. So you can put in whatever Sounds you want. Good. Anyway, so I already grilled that and then the pesto. And so we're going to mix those together. You can choose whatever savory kind of thing that you like or maybe you don't eat meat but you eat cheese you could do different cheese whatever you want you could do pizza ones so when we post the recipe up you'll see there's some ideas there artichoke hearts uh with mozzarella or chicken. spinach chicken uh, I, it, it's endless what's ever in your fridge and sometimes if you have leftover delicious meats or something you can chop that up and make it into a savory appetizer. Absolutely. What yeah. a great idea. Okay. All right. So we're going to roll this out. So this is puff pastry that's been thawed. Put a little bit of flour on the bottom and we're going to roll it so that it fits over here. And then we're going to put another one on top. So follow the directions to roll out and thaw your puff pastry. So we're sort of making it long and yes. a little wider. Yes. And let me just show them before I lift it. So is it going like this in the middle or is it going like this, this it's way? It's going like this. Okay. So as you all can see, it's going this way. And then you're going to fold over the other side. So that's why you want this to come out a little wider. Exactly. All right. So here we go. We've got it. I'm holding it up. And now, as I said, the most difficult part, you're going to make sure there's enough 
and push in. Now if you have nails, be careful because it will push down. So if you have, oh, we have these little things we were going to try and see if that works to help push it down. Be careful if it rips. Just make sure you have enough dough. So now we're going to fill it. And you can see some of the indents didn't hold, but it's okay because when you put the items inside, it will. So um, I'm going to do some chocolate chips here. And I'm pushing it down. And some more chocolate chips here. More. And what are you putting in yours, so Deb? I'm doing the Alouette cheese the um, mushrooms and then I'm going to finish it with a little bit of um, the Alouette cheese on the top. So cheese will be on the top and the bottom. The mushrooms will be here. Okay, then this one got a lot of chocolate. This is a fun thing to do with your uh, kids too. Uh, yeah. So, um, and then I'm adding some marshmallows because I'm going to make s'mores. So that goes down. And some more by graham crackers. Got some inexpensive ones because it's just going in here. Push it down. Then over here, more chocolate. Okay, and to this I'm going to add so chocolate and raspberry. Yum, right? Yep. And there's no right or wrong. You could put the raspberry in first and then the chocolate on top. Here I'm gonna do the raspberry here on the bottom. Pesto. And add some goat cheese on top. Okay, and then <clears throat> so it's it's whatever you want it to be. So this is just kind of a, a fun thing. Just delicious. Delish. Okay. So I'll make some more s'mores. Because who doesn't like s'mores? And then this one, add that, and then we'll add another banana. Okay. All right, now we're going to take our other puff pastry and roll that out. So Deb, let me know when you're ready okay. for that. Okay, put some flour at the bottom so it doesn't stick. This one is going to be way easier because you're just rolling it and putting it on top as opposed to pushing it in. I have a feeling if there were metal ones, it'd be easier. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. I love puff pastry, but it does spring back just be aware yes it does so may have to move a little fast okay so there it is again whoops we're going to cut off the excess so for now it's here and stretching it out okay so I'm done with my mixture, so let me okay. move this out. Just wipe off so my hands. Now, using a sharp knife or kitchen shears. Oh, that looks beautiful, Deb. Thanks. Okay, so now move all this stuff forward, and then we have another sheet, correct? Yes. Just wipe this off because I've got some gooey stuff on there. Okay. Okay. Flop it on. 
a little flower, a little flower on the bottom so it doesn't stick. Okay, so I've somewhat trimmed the excess, not all of it, but I will later. So now it goes, this will go into the refrigerator for 10 minutes. Okay, and you don't flatten it down on the each one, right? You know what? Maybe I will. See, we learn by experiment. <laughs> and you we know, make every recipe our own. Yeah, and every time I've done this, I've done it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, into the refrigerator. And I'm almost done. Dun, da, da, da. Put this on top. And so you cut this part off? Yeah, trim, trim a lot of the excess. Okay. And I have a lot of puff pastry left over. In, so we can save something. it. Yeah. yeah. Make something with yeah, it. Yeah, you never give, throw it away. Yeah. If this is um, gold. Yeah. We'll combine okay. it. You can, we were talking about this earlier, roll it out, put it in muffin tins around, and then uh, put your savory inside of it and bake it. Yeah, that would be perfect. It would be really, really good. Okay, uh, so you pinch the edges? No, so you just push it down. There we go. And what about the side part? Uh, just that, leave, it it as, leave it as is. Okay. Okay, and stick it in the fridge. Okay, so I'm just going to probably try to get more of the middle. Yours looks like it came out really good. Well, we'll see. This is real <laughs> cooking, folks. We'll find out. Okay. And as many times as I've made this, and the idea never is know. That, um, it, it makes it a little bit harder, which is good. So when you're flipping it over, then it'll be easier to, to, exactly. to cook and exactly. do and all that stuff. Okay. All it's right. Going in. Into the fridge. As we said, 10 minutes. So let's, let's mark <clears throat> the clock for 10 minutes. And then you, uh, that's when all the magic starts happening. And we're back. So now it's been 10 minutes in the fridge. And the moment of truth, uh, we flip it over. So one at a time. And you can see there's excess here that we're going to be cutting off that as well. So should you do it on the tray before you cut it? Or no? I think I think it's easier that way. Okay. Okay. So now do you want to cut your... Yeah, I'll cut it so that... So that way... That way you don't have to do a lot of transfer. And I'm leaving an, some edge to it. I don't know if you could see. That's because we're going to use a fork and go around and seal it. So as they say, seal the deal. Seal the deal. Lift it up so you could see what it looks like. All right. Now for my moment of truth. Okay. Ready, set, bam. <laughs> wow, you go for it. Okay, so should, so you're saying wait to cut this. Yeah, take uh, it out first. Take it out first. Okay, so with these plastic, we're sort of pinching it. Hopefully it's coming out. Yeah, it's coming out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And we're out. We're there. Okay. Woohoo. Wow. Okay. And what you see here is just from the, uh, the pesto. The, oh, the pesto. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. You want to cut the edges. All right. So just about, so you leave about, a, not quite an inch. Right. Right. So now all right, so one half done. Okay. And while she's doing that, you see here, we have some egg wash and what if you don't know what egg wash is it's essentially an egg that you've scrambled sometimes there, people put a little bit of water in it i never do i think it's fine the way yeah, it is yeah and so you're going to dip a brush into egg wash and you're going to brush the whole thing so 
just want to take off some of this top here. Now, do you brush first and then seal? You could do either one. I'm going to try seeing which way is better. I think now that I'm doing this, it's better to, to use the fork first, indent, and then the egg wash. The egg wash is making it a little bit slippery. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do my indenting first. So. And it sort of gives it a pretty edge. Mm hmm And what the egg wash does is it helps to seal it and it makes it look pretty. We're good. Let's cut just a little bit here. There we go. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to put on my egg wash. So... So then once the egg wash is done, you stick it in the oven for 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. So you could check it because everybody's oven is different. different. So uh, you want it to be a nice golden brown. So that's going to be the key. But you saw how fun it is. Yeah. And again, I would do another tray of these. I would do pizza ones. That oh, would be yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, See, in the egg wash, that's what makes it that beautiful golden brown that beautiful color. It makes color. it shiny. Yeah. I'm trying to and as you down. see, this was one egg, so it's enough for both. Oh, yeah. You can make more. Yeah. And, and it would be plenty. And sometimes when they, like, it kind of ooze in a little bit, it is sort of. So we used also one package of puff pastry per ice cube tray appetizer. But you saw we also had a lot left over uh, to, to make other things. I tried this the other day using just one um, puff pastry instead of the two as we did, and it was a little bit more challenging. So I definitely recommend doing two. Okay, so we're ready to go into In the, uh, the uh, oven. So you said at 400? 400 degrees okay, for so, 30 minutes. So bake, 400. 30 minutes. Here we go. All right, we're ready. So the next dish is super easy and so good mm. and a lot of fun. You can get your kids to do it, grandkids. Um, it's just super, super easy. So we have a package of bacon, and if you like um, the hickory or um, whatever bacon, you can put um, sugar mm -hmm. on. You can do all sorts of things. Peppery. Peppery, whatever you want. And then buy some breadsticks. I like to use the sesame uh, sticks ones. And so I'm gonna give some to Norma, and then I'll do some. And I've never made this before, so it's, it's here so we go. easy. And, and it's so good. And all you do is you wrap your bacon. Um, so we're gonna take a piece of bacon. I've already cut this open. So you take a piece of bacon like this, and you pull it off like so. And then at the top of your stick, you just wrap it around and then sort of, whoop, you just keep turning and it comes down in a spiral. So you sort of catch it and you just, you hold it at the bottom. So you twist from the bottom. Okay. Hold the bottom there and then twist. And then you get to the bottom like that. <clears throat> I'm going to move this off over here. And then you just, well, we sort of made a mess. So I'm just going to move these guys over here for a minute. Just clean this off two seconds. The sesame seeds. And then you just lay it down. Ta-da! Ta-da! You, you can't get any easier than that. Wow. And then these bake for about, uh, roughly about 20 minutes or so. You know, if your oven's at 400, um, they'll cook a little faster. And you can sort of cap it like I did on the top, and, and you just twist, twist, twist. Now, at the end, when these are done and they're hot, we're going to take them out of the oven and you can do a mixture of uh, Parmesan cheese, 
Uh, you can put in some spicy um, pepper if you want, or um, I just use Parmesan cheese, but you can, you can add other array of items that you like. And you see how easy this is. And what fun for our little ones to make this, even big ones like I Yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> sort of like a bacon lollipop. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, a package gives you about 24. And for our purposes, we're just going to use what's left up with this. And yeah, because we cannot eat 24, or maybe we could, we but probably could. we shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, everything's better with bacon, right? Yeah. So you can also do this with salads when you're serving dinner or a lunch. And it's a nice twist on, it's a nice twist on, um, here you go. Thank you. Uh -huh. On um, bread for a salad or dinner salad. I mean, it doesn't have to be just for breakfast. You can eat bacon any time. Yeah, that's true. Anytime. This would be good with a salad, definitely. Yeah. But really good with brunch. Yeah. And you could sprinkle this with brown sugar if you wanted to or maple. So I'm going to just cut this in half, sort of, give you that. Here's, we have little pieces. Yeah, I make a um, candy bacon. Uh -huh. A lot of people I'm sure do with uh, uh, black pepper and brown sugar and put it in a bowl and you could do the same thing with the bacon and then wrap it around this. Or as you said, roll it in. Yeah, yeah. So when it's done, then we'll roll it and it's super good. And see how easy you, you make this in a matter of minutes. And I always like to be prepared and have my things done way ahead of time. So uh, my point to you is you can make this the night before, have it ready to go if you're in a hurry. And then the last minute is you're just popping it into the oven That's and then I'll show perfect. you. So look how great and fun this is. So now this will go into the oven for about 20 minutes. So we'll, when, do, when do we put the Parmesan on you it? You put that on at the end. At when the you, very it's, end? It's piping hot. So you take it out and carefully, I'll show you, we're gonna put, um, they say a plate. I like to use the parchment paper, so we'll put some Parmesan on the parchment, roll it, and then we'll put it on our serving tray. And then we add pesto, you can make your own mm. pesto. I know Norma makes a delicious pesto with, um, uh, I, I make it, I just made a pistachio pesto that ooh. was amazing, but I also use pecans. Yeah. Because it's sweeter than, um, using walnuts or and pine nuts are pretty expensive and pine nuts sometimes have a little bit of a different flavor mm -hmm. i like mine Didn't on the you sweeter use cashew side. before too or no no but now i'm going to okay or maybe do a variety there you go well, okay. okay so now we're going to make delicious pecan pie muffins that melt in your mouth they're super good yes so you call them pecans or what's the other way pecan pecans Pecans. <laughs> Whatever. It's all the same. It's okay. all good stuff. Okay. So first what we're going to do is we're going to mix the flour. It's a half a cup of flour. And, and your brown sugar. Like one cup of brown sugar packed. So this is what it looks like packed. Ta -da, ta -da. And then we just mix this so it's all blended. Like so. This takes a couple seconds. And as you can see, so it just doesn't have to be perfect, but it's it takes just a couple seconds to blend. And then we're going to, in yeah. a separate bowl, I'm gonna wait with the pecans for a moment. Okay. I'm gonna beat the eggs. Casualty. <laughs> Come on, go on in. What? There we go. Yeah. Okay, here we go. And I like to use a glass bowl because, I mean, I've used metal bowls before. We're putting in the butter now and blending that all together. But I, where's my spatula? 
not fix. Um, I like to use the glass bowl because especially when you need something to be more at room temperature, I find with my metal bowls to get too cold. Oh, okay. So that's why I do that. So. And the butter that she put in was softened so you can let it sit out at room temp or microwave it just till it gets, bit. just till it gets soft. So you see the consistency. And just a little bit faster. All that yummy goodness. Okay, next, Norma, would you like to pour in the dry ingredients? Just pop them in. Okay. There we like go. So it's all in. And use this to mix it. I mean, you can't get easier than this. I know. And if my you want to start adding the nuts, just pop them in. Okay. I like lots of nuts. The nuttier, the better. And that was uh, what almost? It was like a cup, cup and a half, or it's supposed to be a cup. Okay. So that is it. We are done. Wow. Perfect. So I have pre-greased my trays and see the consistency is a little thicker so what i'm going to do is just pop this in Oop. maybe i have too much in there so you fill it up what maybe halfway about halfway and this it says eight but i think we can get 12. so with my fingers i'm rounding it and making it perfect but you could also use a spoon right but if you've watched our cooking show, you know I, I like to use my fingers for everything. Yes, me too. I'm going to take some out here and put some there. And I pre-greased this. I used the Joy Cooking Spray for baking. Which is a combination of um, flour with your canola oil. Right. If you want to, I'm not big on icings and that kind of stuff, but if you want, there's an additional recipe that will be on the, uh, on our channel here. And you can, um, it shows you how you can make a glazed, um, Oh, glazed topping topping. If you're yeah, like. icing. Okay. There, I think we're about right. Maybe that one needs to, just a little more over here. Scooch that down. Okay, and then you finish this off. I'm just trying to make them sort of even. There we go. And then you put a pecan on the top, which finishes them out and it bakes right in. Let's take no time. Super easy. Whoop. Very. Oh. And we're done. Ta-da! Voila! And then you bake that for about um, 15 to 17 minutes. So that's going in, and we've got something coming out. So let's yes, see what... Yes, the we're... oven is calling us. Yes. Okay. We'll be right back. And we're back. So next, we have breakfast pizza. How can that be bad? Right? I know everybody loves pizza, but what makes this one different is it's made out of hash browns, not pizza dough. It's so simple, but for the purposes of today, we've cut the recipe in half because it makes a huge pizza, but uh, we will be posting the recipe up and it's the full recipe. So for today, I've got all your favorite ingredients in one. Yes. <laughs> Eight ounces of... Uh, of what you can see hash browns that have been thought out okay you can do your own it's easier to buy them it's easier to buy them if you do your own you have to rinse 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 because it has all of that and turn black and the starch and all that the stuff starch there. so so much easier just buy it this way so i'm going to make a little well and then to to this which is about eight ounces i'm going to add an egg and the egg is what binds it it keeps it exactly. together exactly <clears throat> so don't worry. Uh, it calls for a large egg. If you have a medium, that's fine what too. What kind of mixer do you need for it? Uh, you're going to use your hands. Okay. So <laughs> then, uh, favorite thing. My favorite. Now I'm going to add a quarter cup of cheddar cheese. 
Now here's the thing interesting. If you want this spicy, use a spicy cheese pepper jack. That yeah. would be really yeah. interesting. Or to this, you could add some green chilies. You could cut up a jalapeno, finely diced, put it in here. Or if you're going to use canned chilies, make sure that uh, you drain it very well. Yeah. So now to this, I'm also going to add a little bit of kosher salt. And because Deb doesn't like black pepper, I am not <laughs> adding black pepper. Well, you can put it in if you want. No, it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't. It we doesn't all we it. both have our things we like and don't like. Yes. Okay. I'm much pickier. I just I must say, <laughs> as Norman it's knows. True. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here we go, and um, it's all mushed up. Is that easy or what? And now, another fun thing you could do with your kids. Who doesn't like to stick their hands and stuff like that? Exactly. So then, uh, now, we're going to make it round. But if you're going to do this for a brunch, I really think maybe doing a big square yeah. Detroit-style pizza would be much easier to cut and serve to your guests. Right, because you can do the square. Exactly. But pizza's and pizza's supposed to be round, so... Unless you're from Detroit, and yeah. then they'll argue with you. Yeah. Well, I'll say it's, it's square. Yeah. But... Um, you know what? There's no such thing as bad pizza. Nope. Although some New Yorkers would <clears throat> argue that. Okay, look how easy. Are you seeing this? Look. So I'm pushing it out. And then that's it. Now what's going to happen is you bake this <clears throat> for 20 to 25 minutes. And I push a little bit in here because I'm going to put eggs in there, make a well. So it goes in to the oven, 400 degrees, as I said, for about um, 22 minutes or so. Check it. You just want it to be golden brown. So I always go be prepared. So if you're doing a brunch the next day, you could do this step and have it partially ready to go and then bake it, take it out. And then you could probably pop it back in the oven for a few minutes. Absolutely. Just to, to get it, it warm, yeah. you know, room temperature and then do that. And with so, the magic of TV. Well, Ta-da! Okay. So now here's one pre-made. Looks exactly like the other one. And so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to top it with some cheddar cheese. So it's three quarters of a cup. What's and if you didn't like cheddar cheese, you could use a white cheese. You could you use can. jack cheese. You could use pepper uh, jack. Swiss cheese. But I like cheddar. Okay. That's a nice flavor. Okay. <clears throat> that's plenty of cheese. All right. And then uh, to this, I'm going to kind of push down and I'm going to make a well. And then, Deb, could you get out of the fridge uh, eggs? How many do you need? I will uh, need four eggs. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. Okay. So this reminds me of like a yeah. shashuka where you... And Norma said smaller eggs. Don't get the giant eggs. Yeah. Unless you're doing a big old yeah. pizza. Yeah. See, I have the large eggs. So which worked really good when I did the big one. Okay. I'm gonna use this like glue to yeah. keep it. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Exactly. Okay. Stay, stay, stay. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely use smaller eggs because these these are way too big, way too big. Let me take some of the cheese from. Yeah, it's running away. It's running away. Okay. And as I said, this is a mini one that I made. When I made the big one, it worked fine um, because it's huge. It's around this, and so it calls for four eggs. But so, maybe we could have used two, but whatever. maybe, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's stick this in the oven now, and uh, we're going to put it in for about 
13 minutes. Again, 400. Okay, and you, you have to watch it because uh, if you want your eggs really cooked, you will uh, do it longer than 13 minutes. If you want your eggs on the runny side, 12 minutes. So here it is. And so let's sprinkle the bacon on here. Okay. Yummy, 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 yummy. And it's already been cooked. And I cooked the bacon in a microwave. I put it on a paper, uh, wrap it in a paper towel on a paper plate, four minutes on one side, For two how many minutes. pieces? I did uh, six. And then um, two minutes on the other side. It's about a minute per slice, right? About. Roughly. But again, the four minutes on that one side is important. Then you pull it out. And this is, here, let's show. And this is what you have. I pull it out and I chop it up and it's perfect. It's And the chives the, go on last? Last. So the fat has been rendered off of the bacon. Okay. Okay, so here we go. And that cooks for how long? Okay, it'll cook with the egg about 11 to 12 minutes. 12 minutes more or less. And if you like goo your eggs? Then do it less. And open the oven, check it with, touch it with your finger, the, the white part to see, make sure it's not too runny. Yeah, or too well done. Or it'll come out like egg McMuffin, which yes. I've done that too. <laughs> so next we're making this yummy nectarine salad with cucumber, basil, honey goat cheese that I get in a log, and a red onion. And if you don't like, I have one of my daughters hates onions, so don't put it in if you yeah. don't like it. It's just super easy. So what I've done, now you can do with, you know, lettuce. I put in some romaine lettuce. You can use whatever kind of lettuce you like. So I've chopped it up, as you can see. And then um, I have nectarine. You can use peaches. You can use whatever you want. I really love nectarine. So I'm just going to pop that in. I like it with the skin because it's a nice contrast. Yes, yeah. And it makes such a beautiful salad. So I'm going to just finish this out. And our oven's telling us we're almost done with our other things that we're cooking. So I'm just going to chop this real quick. And make sure I don't chop my fingers. I have new knives in there. Yeah, really I'm really like sharp. holding my breath. Yeah. Watch your, what you're doing. And so here we go. So super easy to put together. So I'm just going to combine all this. Next, um, I have an onion. So I chopped it very fine. You don't have to use all it. Now, if you want to, I just want to show you, you can cut it super, super thin. Sometimes people like really super thin slices like that. Oh. So you could do that too. This maybe is a little bit too much. So I'm just going to do a little bit and that's it. I'm not going to use the whole thing. And then I have some fresh basil that I'm growing. You pop that in. And then the cucumbers. Again, I like them a little bigger and crunchier, but if you want to make them smaller, you can certainly chop them up and make them smaller. Those look like Persian. Yeah, it's the hothouse cucumber. And then you take your goat cheese and you... Oop, I'm just going to move this aside. So you just cut off a little bit like so. And you sort of crumble it crumble in. It. And it's so good. Oh, I love goat cheese. Yeah. Goat cheese and bacon. Everything's yeah. <laughs> really, really good. You could put bacon in here yeah. if you wanted. Oh, yeah. So here you that go. That way you would have your sweet and savory right. at the same time. So if you didn't want to use goat cheese or you don't like goat cheese, I have a friend who doesn't because... Mary, I won't tell me your story, but she had a bad experience with goat cheese. It wasn't anything bad. You can use feta. Yeah, you can use feta. You which would go really good. And make it good. a little saltier. Yeah. So here we go. So you could use any other cheese. And then I'll put this back. The next thing, who doesn't like pistachios? Which just, you've chopped, right? I've chopped them. Rough the chop. More, the more the merrier. Let me just rinse off my hands. And pop this over here. 
Then you mix it all together like so. How beautiful is this? Oh, that is a for summertime. It's perfect. And our brunch. Oh, it's perfect. excellent. Adds a little savory, I think. Mm -hmm. Sweet, savory in the salad. Then I add just a little bit of seasoning, my favorite porterhouse. I use it on everything. You know, it'd be interesting in this too is cold shrimp. Oh, you could. You could yeah. add other things to it. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, our other favorite is Antica oil, and it's blood orange olive oil. So just drizzle a little bit. Shout in. out to Mary at Antica. Yes. You say Antica, I said Antica. <laughs> and this is white apricot balsamic. So any white type of um, balsamic, or you can use a little bit of oil in, in uh, just but the some white, balsamic. The white balsamic makes it lighter. Yes, and it doesn't and turn it, it doesn't yeah. make it darker. And it's fruitier too. Yeah. She has, uh, at Antica, they have all sorts of white balsamic, strawberry, everything. You name it, you've got they to have go. it. You've got to They're go in there. Los Alamitos, little plug. <laughs> and there you go, your salad is ready to go. But if you are having your guest over, don't put on the final olive oil until it's and other until uh, your gusts arrive and then that won't get soggy. All right, the oven's calling us. It's so calling us again. Let's go see, we'll be right back. And we're back. Um, you heard the beeping. So we pulled out the savory and the sweet appetizers. And we let it cool down. That's why I'm able to hold this. We let it cool down because if you cut it, when it comes right out of the oven, it's going to run. Right. So there's a bunch of stuff. So why don't we, Bring it over here. You know what, I'm going to get a cookie, uh, a cutting board. Okay. And maybe cut it on the cutting board. I think it might be easier. And you just slip this right under. That's the beauty of parchment paper. Yeah. It doesn't stick. Okay. So we'll move oh, this wow. away. Here we go. Okay. So it has cooled down. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Just wipe this down. Okay. Don't okay. Worry about it. So, so I'm going to cut down the middle. Yes. Mm -hmm. This looks yummy. See, that sort of before we cut in the, I just want to show everyone. So it's a little open, but it's mm -hmm. okay. And then you just cut your individual little pieces. Exactly. My mouth is watering. Yes, it looks so oh. good. Okay, something's almost ready. And you know, it it's not perfectly formed in the ice cubes, but who cares? It looks Wonderful. And it Delish. Even better. Delish. Yeah, I'm glad I used the mats. It would have been easier. Okay. Put that over there. Okay, the oven's calling. We'll be right back. Okay, and so we've cut it up, plated. It looks delicious. It looks delicious. I can't wait. I know. Okay, on to the next segment. We'll be right back. Mmm. Now we're, oh, it smells so good. Oh my yeah, God. It's a good thing we let it cook longer. Yes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just take some Parmesan, sprinkle it on top. It's really hot and it should get a little gooey. And just um, sprinkle a little more, like so. Put some on the bottom here and then just put it on our serving tray. How delicious is this? Oh, it looks fantastic. And I'm just going to use the rest of this on here. Could you ever like at the last minute take them out and then put a uh, sprinkle Parmesan and let it bake in the oven on it? You probably could. That might be a good idea. And this way it's just, it looks so beautiful. It's and then beautiful. this is pesto. I bought it at Costco. And if you want to make your own. Um, we should have you do that one time. And 
And so we'll, uh, we'll do a pistachio pesto. Yeah. Time. But look how beautiful. And this is done. So there you uh, go. We'll be yeah. right back. And we are back. So there you have your pecan muffins. Don't they look delicious? Ooh. Uh, so I just take them like this and just. Oh. This one's stuck. Oh, it's all out. Okay. And look how beautiful. You just turn them, put them on your plate. You can add a doily. Are these amazing or what? And they taste even better. Young people are probably going, what's a doily? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. They're it, hard to find too. 99 cent store. It's, it's a cut out. It's a paper that's cut out and it looks like, uh, what do you call that Japanese artwork that it starts with a U? Everybody's yelling at me right now what it is. But anyhow, I don't that's know. what a doily is. But you yeah. don't need it. No, you don't. And you're done. And I do have a picture of a doily I'll show you. Is it called origami? Whatever. Origami, yeah. Wow. But a doily looks like this. Ah, if I can get it off. They're so, they're super thin. And they come in all different sizes. But this is a doily. It's paper. So you can do it this way, that way, and things look really pretty on it. So you can do that too. Okay. And we're almost getting ready to the final. Yes. Bon appetit. Next okay. comes our cocktail and the pizza. And the pizza. Okay. But see how easy this is. And you can pre-make a lot of these and just warm them up. And you saw how easy that came out. So we'll be right back. We're back. We are almost done. Okay. We have all the food done. Now for the drinks. Okay, so this is a watermelon pina colada. Ooh. So super easy. So I had some frozen watermelon, which I froze, obviously, cut in cubes. And you freeze it because that's sort of like your ice without diluting it. And that's about four cups? This is four cups. <coughs> Excuse me. Then to that, you add um, eight ounces of pineapple juice. And this is an eight ounce. This is eight ounces. Pour that in. To that, we add six ounces of rum. I think I'll do a little less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do a couple shots. We're not heavy duty drinkers. This is one ounce. And we haven't eaten. That's true. There's two. It calls for six. six, but we're not making that much. You can always add more yeah, if exactly. you want your drinks a little exactly. stronger. And then um, we add eight ounces of your unsweetened coconut milk. Okay. Oh, that's it. I, I don't know why I was expecting it to be clear. <laughs> Pour that in. And this one. Did you have to shake this? Because sometimes I know with coconut milk. I did. I did. Yeah, it's a good thing to always shake it because it shake separates. It. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. And ready. Voila. So you used about 12 ounces of coconut milk. Yeah, because we didn't use as much. Right, longer. right. Yeah. Oh, it looks. And da 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 da. This is really icy. Yep. I made a mess. Do you want a spoon? Eh, that's probably the easier way to do it, but there. Okay. I'll clean up my mess, but to the dish. We need to add some garnish. So in the refrigerator, in a little plastic cup, I have our garnish of pineapple and watermelon. So look how pretty. Oh, that's fun. Very festive. And tasty. And tasty, too. Cheers. Yes. Reminds me of Barbie. Yes. Mm. That's good. I think we're going to need a spoon with it to go so yeah all right so we're going to finish up our pizza we'll bring everything out and you can see everything that we made and i am so excited to share that with you okay so, so so we'll be right back yes. stay tuned 
And we're back. So now we have the breakfast pizza. You see I've sprinkled uh, bacon on it that I talked about earlier. We're going to, just to make it pretty, put some chives. If you don't have chives, green onion would go, especially if you're making this a little bit spicy, as I said, with a pepper jack or the, um, if you want, you can even put salsa on here. Uh, jalapenos. But jalapenos inside. See, I know about those things. I yeah. just don't eat them. <laughs> you, can, you can change it up whatever way you want. But we eat with our eyes. And so we're going to move this over. And I'm doing this without a spatula. Would you like a so spatula? Maybe. Oh, you know what? I've got it. Okay. I've got it. Okay. So here we go. Looks delicious. <clears throat> Breakfast pizza. And we'll cut into it. And again, this recipe was cut in half. So it looks so good. So there you go. Um, and oh, my eyes. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> yeah. And there we have it. So, okay. So, Manja, I don't even know where to start. All right, Debbie, let's. You know what? I'm gonna take pick this one and then we're cut gonna it cut it in half. half. So this one has the mushroom and onion. Here, I let. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> our hands are very clean. Yes. Okay, and this one I'll cut in half. I don't know what it is. Oop! I cut the bottom off. All right, girlfriend. Good job. Here we go. All right, let's try. Let's try this egg pizza. I can't wait. Mmm. The bread. So good. And the breadsticks with the bacon. Really good. The pizza is delicious. Let's see. And it's perfect because so many times you go and you get hash browns and eggs, and mm -hmm. it's all done. It's all in one. And as I said, if you do it in a big square with little eggs, it would come yeah. out really good. But it is good. Mm -mm. How can you go wrong hash browns with cheese? Oh my God. Mm. The salad is refreshing and popping with delectable mm. flavors mm. that mm. just are, it's a party in your mouth. Mmm. Salad's very good. Perfect for summer. Mm -mm -mm. And the pesto. Okay, I have a s'mores here. Mmm. That's fun. What you can do instead of putting chocolate chips, you can melt chocolate and squeeze it in. I've done that. It's a lot more work, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. The pecan muffins. To die for? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll go to that next. Mmm. Oh, my. It's gooey. It's rich. It's so good. And delicious. Mmm. It's and crunchy. Last but not least... Our pina coladas. Mm. Here's to a great cooking partner. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's yummy. That's good, Deb. It's really good. Very refreshing. Uh -huh. And if you don't want to, if you don't drink, you can leave the um, rum out. And make a mocktail. Yes. Super. And it's perfect for the Barbie pink. Or if you want it a little okay. bit stronger. Add more vodka or rum, rum. and uh, there you go. Mmm. Okay, I didn't try your your savory one. Can you tell what what is that? That's the mushrooms and onions. Mmm. Came out really good. Really good. So fun, easy. So for your next brunch, think outside the box, and it's very different. People are used to seeing the same things for brunch all the time. Like Deb said, 
thinking outside the box. Hope you try it all. We're posting the recipes. Till next time. Manja. Manja. We'll see you on What's Cooking. Cookin'. Yay.